In this video, we're going to be looking at the water purification required practical for GCSE chemistry and combined science. The first thing we need to make sure we're aware of is the safety precautions that we're going to take. In this case, it's going to be the wearing of safety goggles and also all of the equipment that we're going to use, making sure that we're familiar with it and that we know the correct names for all of this equipment. So in this required practical, we're going to look at three different samples of water. Sample one, seawater, sample two, fresh water, and sample three, distilled water. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a method for measuring the pH of these different samples of water. We're going to look at a method for determining the mass of dissolved solids in these samples of water. And we're also going to look at the method for obtaining distilled water from seawater. So the method we're going to use to obtain our distilled water is shown here. So we're going to place our seawater into a conical flask and attach it via a delivery tube to a boiling tube, which is going to be sat into an ice cold water bath. And then we're going to heat our seawater until it boils and evaporates. And that evaporated water vapor is then going to condense in our boiling tube when it comes into contact with the cool surface because it's sat in that cold water bath. So in order to obtain our distilled water from our seawater, we're going to use this setup here. So we have a conical flask, we have a delivery tube, and that delivery tube is going into a boiling tube, which is sat in a cold water bath. So this is ice cold water. So what we need to do is we need to add our seawater to our conical flask. So I'm adding 50 centimeters cubed. And then we need to place the bung in the top and then over a roaring flame we're going to start evaporating our seawater. So what we are going to see happen is that the seawater is going to start to evaporate. That evaporated water vapour is going to travel up the conical flask through the delivery tube and into our boiling tube and because our boiling tube is in a ice cold water bath the water vapour will hit the cold surface of the boiling tube and it will condense. So what we'll be ending up with is our distilled water collecting in the boiling tube over here and eventually if we leave this to evaporate for long enough all that will be left over here would be the dissolved impurities in the seawater. So we should end up with pure distilled water over in our boiling tube. So after heating for a little bit what we can see is the water here is clearly boiling and evaporating and we can start to see that that water vapour is condensing in the boiling tube and collecting at the bottom of the boiling tube. So we're collecting our distillate, our distilled water here in the boiling tube. Now, once you've collected enough of your distillate, it is now time to turn off the gas. can now look at our collected distilled water. So here we have the method that we are going to use to determine the pH of our three different water samples. So we have sample one, which is our seawater, sample two, which is our fresh water, and sample three, which is our distilled water. And then we are also going to determine the mass of dissolved solids in our sample one seawater. So the first thing we're going to look at is the pH of our different samples of water. So we've added a few drops of sample one seawater to our spotting tile, a few drops of sample two, the fresh water, and a few drops of sample three, our distilled water. And using universal indicator, we're going to record the pH. So a few drops of universal indicator added to each, and we should be able to see the pH. As we can see, when we added the universal indicator to water sample 1, the seawater, we got a dark green colour indicating a pH of approximately 8. For sample 2, our fresh water, we got an orange colour indicating a pH of approximately 6. And for water sample 3, our distilled water, we got a pale green colour indicating a likely pH of 7. So the last thing we're going to look at is how we determine the mass of dissolved solids in a water sample. 
And for this example, we're going to use the seawater because our seawater is going to give us the greatest amount of dissolved solids. So to do this, all we need to use is a measuring cylinder, a watch glass and a balance and then obviously a Bunsen burner. So the first thing we're going to do is to measure out four centimetres cubed of our seawater sample into our measuring cylinder. And before we add it to our watch glass, we need to make sure we measure its mass. So our watch glass on its own is 31.22 grams. And that's important because what we're going to do is we're going to add our water sample to that watch glass. And then we're going to evaporate all of the water, which will only leave behind the dissolved solids. And then at the end, we're going to reweigh the watch glass with those dissolved solids to get the mass. And then the difference in mass will tell us the mass of dissolved solids. The next thing we need to do then is to set up a boiling water bath like here so that we can evaporate the water in our watch glass. Now, we can't heat it directly because there's so little water, it'd get too hot too quickly, it will just crack the watch glass. So we're going to use this, uh, this hot water bath to evaporate the water in our watch glass uh, without damaging the watch glass. So once you can see that the water has evaporated, leaving you behind the crystals of your soluble solids, you can turn off the Bunsen burner and then you can reweigh your watch glass. So the last thing we left to do is to reweigh our watch glass, this time with all of our insoluble solids, which gives us a mass of 32.7 grams. And then we can see it's clearly gone heavier, and that's because of those dissolved solids. So if we just take the difference between those two masses, 32.7 minus 31.22 gives us a mass of 1.48 grams of dissolved solids in our 4 centimeter cubed sample of seawater. So by comparing the mass before and after evaporating the seawater, we were able to calculate the mass of solids that must have been dissolved in our 4 centimetres cubed of seawater, which was 1.48 grams. So what I'd like you to have a go at now is to use a flow map to describe the process of using distillation to obtain potable water from seawater. So the first step to our method is going to be to measure out the seawater. Now you don't have to say 20 centimetres cubed as long as it's a reasonable value. So you can say 25, 50, even 100 centimetres cubed. But when you're writing methods, try to give specific values. So measure out 20 centimetres cubed of seawater into a conical flask connected to a boiling tube in a cold water bath. Okay, so I've underlined seawater because we are trying to talk about a method of obtaining potable water from seawater and everything else I've put in bold and underlined is that the key information we need to be using we need to give measurable values and we need to specify the equipment we are going to use so I've specified a conical flask and a boiling tube and a cold water bath and this is more important than you might think because if you'd simply put in beaker instead of a conical flask you're going to lose the marks because a conical flask is suitable because it has a narrow opening in order for you to attach the bung and the delivery tube. You couldn't do that with a beaker. So you need to use suitable equipment. So in this case, it has to be either a conical flask or you could have replaced the conical flask perhaps with a boiling tube, anything that really you could put a bung into the top of in order to have your delivery tube. The next step is to heat that conical flask to evaporate the seawater. And again, I've made a point of mentioning the equipment and the process. Okay, the water is going to evaporate. Finally, it is now going to be water vapor, which will condense in the boiling tube. And again, I've specified the equipment, I've specified, specified the process that is being undergone, and I've specified what's happened to the water. It's no longer seawater, it's now water vapor.
And finally, we're going to continue heating until enough potable water has been collected, or you could replace that with distilled water has been collected.